Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. This is part two of a two-part series where we move Piper the dog from her original photo and place her into a different photo. In part one, we saw how to use edge detection to make a realistic selection of Piper, including much of her fine stray fur around the edges. Then we output the selection as a new layer with layer mask. We also used a hue saturation trick to remove a strong color cast that Piper had from her original photo. So go back and watch that if you haven't seen it yet. In part two, we're going to take our new version of Piper and put her into the other photo and use a couple more tricks to make it look like she's a natural fit with her new surroundings. So let's get started. You need to have both photos open in Elements, which I do. I'll click on the tab of the photo that we're placing her into, which is this one with the fountain. And we need the photo bin visible, so go down to the lower left of Elements window and choose Photo Bin by clicking on it. Now we can see the thumbnails of our open photos. I'm going to click on the thumbnail of our Piper photo and continue holding down the mouse as I drag it into the live work area. Once we're in the live work area, we can release the mouse button and the Piper photo is added to the other photo. If you look at the Layers panel, you'll see that she came in on a separate layer above the background layer. I want to make it look like she's jumping in the fountain water after the ducks over on the right side of the fountain. Right now, she's way too big for the new photo, so let's go up to the Image menu and choose Transform, Free Transform. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command-T on a Mac or Control-T on a PC. Now a bounding box appears around the photo we brought in. There's eight handles around the box that we can use to adjust the size. Make sure that Constrain Proportions is checked in the Tool options. If it's not, just click on it. Click and drag diagonally on any of the four corner handles. To make the photo smaller, drag in towards the center, and to make it larger, drag outward away from the center. It's always better to size the image smaller because if you enlarge it too much, the quality of the photo will suffer. I'll click on one of the corner handles and drag diagonally inward. And I'll just drag until she looks about the right size in relationship to the rest of the photo. And now I'll click and drag inside the box to move her over here a little bit, inside of the pool. I'm also going to rotate her slightly to make it look like she's jumping through the water. To rotate, place your cursor outside the bounding box near one of the four corner handles. When it changes to a curved double-headed arrow, you can click and drag to rotate. I'm going to rotate a little counterclockwise. And like I said before, you can place your cursor inside of the bounding box and then click and drag to reposition it. And I think I'll put her right about here. When it looks good to you, click on the green check mark to accept. I think Piper looks a little too bright compared to the rest of the photo, so I'm going to tone her down a bit. I'm going to use an adjustment layer to do that. That way, if I change my mind later and I want to readjust the brightness again, I can go back in and change it. Or if I decide I want her to be like she was originally, I can just get rid of the adjustment layer. To add an adjustment layer, click on this icon at the top of the Layers panel that looks like a half-light, half-dark circle. A pop-up menu will appear, and I'm going to choose Brightness Contrast by clicking on it. The Brightness Contrast panel appears, and you can see the new adjustment layer was added to the Layers panel. I want to decrease the brightness, so I'll drag the Brightness slider towards the left. But when I do that, the whole photo gets darker. That's not what we want. We want just Piper to get darker. So I'm going to undo that by clicking Reset at the bottom of the panel. We can affect just the layer with Piper on it by clicking the icon at the bottom of the panel that looks like a square with a downward facing arrow. By doing that, we're creating what's called a clipping mask. A clipping mask will constrain any changes we make to the adjustment layer to only the layer below it. That's exactly what we want since the Piper layer is right below the adjustment layer. 
Now I'll drag the brightness slider towards the left again, and this time just Piper gets darker. One thing I think we should do to make this composite look more believable is to add a shadow. I'll start by adding a new layer in the Layers panel by clicking the Create a New Layer icon, and we'll add the shadow to this new layer. Of course we want the shadow to be underneath Piper, so I'll click on the layer and drag it down. And once I get those double lines, I can let go, and now my new blank layer is underneath the Piper layer. To make the shadow, I'm going to use a little trick that you can do with layers. The trick is that if you command click from a Mac, or it would be control click from a PC on a layer, it will create a selection from the pixels that are on that layer. So if I command or control click on the layer of Piper, I'll get a selection of her because those are the only pixels on that layer. Remember the gray and white checkerboard pattern represents transparency, so there's no pixels in those areas. Just so you know, you cannot use this trick on the background layer because it's locked. And there are un ways to unlock the background layer, but I'm not going to get into that for this lesson. Make sure your new layer is the active layer by clicking on it, and mine is, I can tell because it's highlighted in blue. And let's rename it by double clicking on the current name to highlight the text and then type shadow. Then press enter or return. Next we'll command or control click on the thumbnail of the Piper layer to make a selection of her. We want to move the selection down. To move just a selection without moving the pixels that it's around, you have to use one of the selection tools in the toolbox. It doesn't matter which one, so you can use any of these three tools. I'll click on the lasso tool to make it active. Now you can just place your cursor anywhere inside the selected area and click and drag to move the selection. Let's start by just moving it straight down for now. Now let's fill the selection with black. Go up to the edit menu and choose fill selection. The Fill Selection dialog box appears. Click on the Use field to see the pop-up menu and choose Black by clicking on it. Then click OK to close the Fill Layer box and accept the change. Now our selection is filled with black. I'm going to deselect by going up to the Select menu and choosing Deselect. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command-D on a Mac or Control-D on a PC. Let's start making it look more like a shadow. First, press Command-T on a Mac or Control-T on a PC for free transform. A bounding box appears around our shadow, and there's eight adjustment handles around the box. We want to make it look like it's laying flat. Let's start by clicking and dragging down on the top center handle. That's the look we're after. Now I'll click anywhere inside the bounding box and keep holding down the mouse button as you drag the shadow up closer to the object. That looks pretty good, so we can click the green check mark to accept it. Now let's blur the edges. To do that, go up to the filter menu and choose Blur and Gaussian Blur and then just click and drag it all the way over to the left. We want to give our shadow a nice soft edge, so I'm just going to start dragging as I watch my shadow. And I can see it's getting a little blurrier. And I think for this one, I don't know, somewhere around 8 to 10 pixels is going to probably be fine. And then just click OK to close the dialog box and accept your change. Now let's lower the opacity of our shadow layer. Go up to the top of the Layers panel and hover your mouse right over the word Opacity. And it changes to a pointing finger with an arrow on either side of it. Now click and drag towards the left to lower the opacity. And you can see our shadow getting lighter. And I'm going to bring mine way down to about 25% or so. At this point, if you want to reposition the shadow, you can go to the toolbox and click on the Move tool to make it active, and then click and drag on the shadow to move it. So I'll just show you. I think mine's okay where it is, but see, I can move my shadow around. 
and it just makes it look a little more realistic, I think, to have that shadow under it. Let's zoom up a little so we can see what our final results look like up close. And I think it looks pretty good. I'd like to thank Joe for letting me use that great shot of Piper for this video. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Until next time, this is Rick saying take care.